when you solve equations that have radicals in them, you need to apply a power to both sides of the equation that cancels out the radical that you've got. And the thing that you need to, to just bear in mind when you do this is that whenever you raise both sides of an equation to a power, always check your solutions. Sometimes, especially in a quadratic equation, you introduce the possibility of an extra solution that's not valid, or some equations simply don't have a solution, and when you square or cube both sides, you introduce an, um, a solution that is not a valid solution. So always check your solutions whenever you are raising both sides of an equation to a power. Okay, so with that in mind, let's have a look at this example. Solve for the variable. So we have a square root of 3y plus 3. The whole of 3y plus 3 is under the third sign. Minus 1 is equal to y. Now, in order to successfully get rid of that radical, it needs to be by itself on one side of the equation. So we're going to leave the square root of 3y plus 3 on the left, and we're going to add 1 to both sides in order to get rid of it on the left-hand side. We can now remove that third by squaring both sides of the equation, because squaring something that is square rooted is doing the inverse operation and it cancels it out. So we're left with 3y plus 3. Now we need to be careful. y plus 1, all squared, means y plus 1 times y plus 1. So you need to do foils. Don't fall into the trap of just squaring the y and just squaring the 1. So the rule is square the first term, which gives you y squared. Find the product of the two inside the bracket and double it. So y times 1 is 1y. Double that gives you 2y. And square the last term gives you plus 1. You can also see it here. There's 1y. There's 1y as your outers and your inners. And 1y plus 1y gives you positive 2y. This is now a quadratic equation because we have a variable squared. So quadratic equations, we solve by getting them equal to 0. So y squared. We now need to um, subtract 3y from both sides and subtract 3 from both sides. 2y subtract 3y is negative y. 1 subtract 3 is negative 2. We now need to find the factors of that trinomial. So the factors of 2 are 2 and 1. We want them to add up to negative 1. So we need a negative 2 and a positive 1. That means that y is equal to 2, or y is equal to negative 1. Okay, now that we've got those solutions, we just quickly need to do a check to see if they're valid. You don't always need to write down your check. You can actually just, um, just look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side and calculate it mentally or using your calculator. But just to show you where it comes from, the left-hand side here, we're going to check y equals 2 as a solution, will be the square root of 3 times 2 plus 3 minus 1. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. And 3 minus 1 is 2. On the right-hand side, we've just got y. And in this case, y is equal to 2. So therefore, that is a valid solution because the left-hand side and the right-hand side give you the same value. If we check y equals what negative 1, the left-hand side is the square root of 3 times negative 1 plus 3, minus 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. Subtract 1 is negative 1. The right-hand side is just equal to y. In that case, y is negative 1. So that is also a valid solution because my left and my right-hand sides are the same. In your homework book, there is an example for you to try. So please pause the video here. Right. So our first job is we want to get the third or the radical by itself on one side of the equation. So negative 3z plus 19, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. We can now square both sides of the equation. That gives us negative 3z plus 19. z minus 3 squared is z squared. z times negative 3 is negative 3z doubled is negative 6z. And negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So we need to add 3z to both sides, add 3z, and we need to minus 19 from both sides. Negative 6 add 3z is negative 3z, and positive 9 subtract 19 is negative 10. 
The factors of 10 that add up to 3 are 7 and 2. Um, sorry, apologies. Uh, 5 and 2, not 7. 5 and 2. We need a negative 5 and a positive 2 to give us negative 3. So therefore, z will be equal to 5 or z will be equal to negative 2. Let's just do a quick check of those solutions. The left-hand side is equal to just z, which in this case will be 5 if z equals 5. The right-hand side will be the square root of negative 3 times 5 plus 19 plus 3. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Negative 15 plus 19 is positive 4. The square root of positive 4 is 2, and 2 plus 3 is 5. So therefore, z equals 5 is a valid solution because my left and my right-hand sides are the same. If z equals negative 2, my left-hand side will be negative 2. My right-hand side will be the square root of negative 3 times negative 2 plus 19 plus 3. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Positive 6 plus 19 is positive 25. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 add 3 is 8. And we can see here we've got a problem because the left and the right hand sides are not equal. So z does not equal to minus 2. We need to cancel that as a possible solution. It's not valid. Okay, so therefore z is equal to 5 is the only solution to that equation.